Hello everyone, so let's keep working on the raccoon. So the next state we're going to make is the false state. But first we need to add colliders to the animal. If I create a cube in front of the raccoon, you will see that I can pass right through it. So let's add one. You can either add a capsule collider on the root of the game object like this. And this collider should be covering all the important parts of the body like the spine and the head. And that way the animal can collide with objects. The other way you can do this is to create internal colliders inside the animal. So let me remove this collider and I will add new colliders to each spine bone. So let's set the collider in the proper position for the first spine bone and let's copy and paste it and do the same for the spine 1 and 2. And let me add another in the head. Something like that. And with those internal colliders I get a more precise collision with external objects. Before adding the false state, right click on the animal component and hit set pivots. Now let's create the false state. So select the raccoon, go to states and create the false state. This state has an ID of 3 and attack set to fall. So let's do the substate machine. Let's rename it fall. And let's create the transition from any state where the transition is state on and state equal to 3, which is the ID for fall. Let's rename the transition to fall. And now let's find on the raccoon the false animations. We have fall from edge, we have fall high, fall low, and recover, which basically is the land animation. So let's do a first test with only one animation in case the animal you are using only has one fall animation. I'm going to create a, an empty state and I'm going to call it fall and also I'm going to tag it fall since the tag required for this state is fall. Now, for the false state, the pivots play a fundamental role. The hip and chest pivots are in charge of finding the ground beneath the animal and also is used on the false state to check if the animal is no longer on the ground. Now, in case of the raccoon, the length of these pivots is too big. They just need to be a little bit beneath the ground. In this case, I'm going to set it to 0.5 in both chest and hip pivots. Also, these pivots are in charge of aligning the animal to the ground beneath him. So, let me do a quick test with the box. And if I push the animal front legs with the box and the back legs, you will see that he will be aligned. And also, let me move it right here. You will see if I enable the gizmos, we have a pink ray at the same length of the pivots. This is the fall ray created by the fall state and is checking if there is no longer ground beneath the animal. So, if I put the raccoon on top of the box and I move forward, he will fall as expected. Now, the fall ray is calculated in front of the raccoon because he is moving. If I change the speed to walk, the distance of the pink ray will be closer to the chest pivot. This may cause that the fall animation is played even when the raccoon is still on the ground. And this looks weird. So how can we fix that? We can go to the raccoon and select the fall state and here on the fall panel we can use the offset parameter to minus 2 and the fall ray will be cast in the center of the raccoon and now when I move forward he will fall when there is no ground beneath it
Also, the move multiplier is the one in charge of moving the fall rate forward when the animal is on different speeds. If I set the move multiplier to 0.2 in a hit play, you will see that the horizontal distance from the start position of the fall ray is higher when I'm trotting. If I change to different speed, you'll see that the ray is changing distance depending on the speed of the animal. So this is used to predict if in front of the animal there's no more ground, so the fall animation can occur at the perfect time. From now, let's set it to zero. Now let's keep improving the false state since we do have more animations that we can use on the raccoon. If you take a look on the false state, you'll see that I have also a fall low animation and these two combined can improve a lot the look of the fall animation. So let me convert this to a blend tree and in this case I'm going to use both fall high and fall low animations and as the parameter I'm going to use the state float. This parameter is used internally by some of the state and in this case the fall state uses it as the normalized distance between the animal and the ground while falling. So when he's close to the ground I'm going to use the fall low animation and when he's further from the ground I'm going to use the high fall animation. Now if you take a closer look you'll see when he starts falling he has the front feet tucked and when he is getting close to the ground he will stretch the front feet. And this is way cooler than what we had before. Ok let me do a landing on the box and let me check right back to the ground and this is looking so much better. Now what else we can do? We can use the fall from edge animation we have on the raccoon. So I'm going to create a new animation state and I'm going to name it fall from edge. But in this case I'm going to use a different tag. Let's call it fall edge. Now I'm creating a new tag because states can use multiple tags. Now with the fall state selected, select the tag panel and on the animation tags, create a new tag modifier. And I'm going to call it fall edge, which is the same one that I'm using here. That way I can activate core features on the animal if he enters that fall from edge animation during the fall state. So when the raccoon is in the fall edge animation, I can use sprint. I won't use gravity because that will be activated during the fall animations. I can keep using the root motion. I'm going to keep using the additive position and rotation speeds from the speed modifiers. And I think that should be all for that tag modifier. But now when to play these animations, I am going to play it if the last state that was playing was idle or locomotion. And idle and locomotion are 0 and 1. So if the last state is less than 2, which means it's 0 or 1, then I'm going to play the fall from edge locomotion and then I'm going to transition to the fall animation and from from edge I'm going to use this animation. Now let's try it. Perfect. So we can play around with the transitions so it plays better. We can also increase the speed of the animation so he falls from edge faster. Now if you notice, now he is falling too late. We can fix that again using the offset or movement multiplier and set it to uh, 
one value, so the fall rate can predict in front of the animal if there is no ground. These parameters are mostly used when you do have a fall from edge animation. So let me try it again. That is so much better. Let's try it in the walk. Perfect. Let's try it in run. And it's working great. Now we need to land. So actually landing is a grounded animation so we can use it on the locomotion state let's go to the locomotion and here we're going to do the recover animation we can do a new animation tag and add it to the locomotion state but since we are not changing any of the core features of the animal when we are landing we can use the same locomotion tag so let me select it and use locomotion so on the transitions if the last state was full then we're going to use the recover animation so last state will be equal to three and then we're going to go to the locomotion just like this sorry in the entry transition is the last state equal to three so if we test this, you will see that we have the land animation. Now we can go to the raccoon and on the land animation, remove a little bit of those extra keyframes. Let's set it to 116. And this will look a little better. Again, you can increase the animation time to make the raccoon or your animal land faster. Okay, as a final test, if we fall without moving the raccoon, he won't do the landing animation, and that is because we are transitioning from fall to the idle state. So what we can do is to copy the transition and the state and paste it into the idle state. And then we're going to transition to the idle animation. And also let's change the tag to idle since we are working with the idle animations. Okay, let's play and see if the landing animation is playing. No. And that is because we need to reorder all the entry transitions and give the recover transition a higher priority. So select the entry state and drag the recover transition to the top of the list. Let's rename this to land here and rename it land also here. If we hit play again, you'll notice that the landing animations is also played correctly on the idle state. And that's it, the false state is done. In the next video, we're gonna set the jump state.